Can you just explain to people what is coercive control? What does that feel like? Coercive control is, it's a build-up, in my case, of the ill treatment by words and actions and looks. Um, I used to have to give my salary to him, belittling me in public about if I'd lost a lot of weight, people thought I was ill. And he'd say, oh, no, you should see her without, without her clothes on. She's got a long way to go yet. Um, I just didn't lack any, I lacked confidence. I, I just couldn't stand up to him. And any time I did, he would just say I was mad and I didn't know my own mind in the end. And I think because Richard had such a control over me from such a young age, um, I'd met this what I thought was charismatic man who would look after me and protect me. And that's what he was in the beginning. There was also violence on his part, wasn't there? There was. Um, early on, before our marriage, um, I knew Richard was seeing somebody else. Um, and he, she rang and he said, don't make me choose, I'll choose her. I became hysterical. And he dragged me down the stairs and threw me out of the house. And then there was the incident in 98. We were staying with friends in America. The boys were with us. Um, we'd all been out somewhere, and um, it was Richard's old friend grabbed me and kissed me. Richard walked round the corner. Um, then he dragged me into the bedroom and he raped me. Um, and I couldn't cry out because my boys are in the next room. And that wasn't the only time that That he wasn't raped the you. only time, no. There were several times during our marriage. Did people, when they saw him belittling you in public, controlling you in public, did other people intervene? They didn't really say anything, no. Nobody intervened. It's seen as a private thing? It's seen as a private thing. Give us a sense of how you change from this sort of compliant, you know, meek, really, young woman into someone who was then capable of such violence that it killed him. I think that I plucked up the courage to leave him after I saw a news report about the brothel which he'd been going to. Um, the girls were trafficked and I confronted him with, with it and he said, what's it got to do with me? It's nothing to do with me. Um, and he dismissed it and said it was, you know, rubbish and it wasn't anything to do with anything that he'd done. And I felt I couldn't live with him anymore. So I made plans to leave. Um, and the day that I left, I got cold feet and I really didn't want to, to leave, but I felt I was on some form of roller coaster. It was a complete build up over those months on the day in question, I'd gone over there. Um, I was aware he was seeing somebody um, and I was aware he was due to see her on the Sunday. Um, it was pouring with rain and he wanted something to eat, so I rushed down to the local supermarket and when I got back, I could see the landline phone had been moved. Um, I took it without him seeing and dialed 1471 and up came her number. Um, I cooked the meal for Richard um, and when he sat down, I asked him if I was going to see him tomorrow and he turned around and said, don't question me, don't question me. And I hit him with a hammer. What was it about what he said that prompted you to react in that it way? It was the words that he used, which were the words he'd always used, don't question me, don't question me. I'm not doing anything, don't question me, you're mad, you're paranoid. And the prosecution made much of the fact that, in the initial trial, made much of the fact that you had a hammer in your it, bag. Yes. I have no recollection of putting it there, but I must have done. Um, I think I just had a manic flashpoint and it, what happened happened and I regret it to this day. Uh, I'm not saying that I shouldn't have been punished. Um, I should have been punished, but I think I served, I've served nine years now in prison which is a long time. I just reacted in a way that I wouldn't have thought I could ever possibly do and was capable of. I blame myself for Richard's death. Um, I will always blame myself for that. Um, but I feel I also blame myself for getting so involved with somebody 
who was able to control me and I didn't get out early enough. In the initial court case, you didn't use Richard's behaviour as a defence in any way. What, why was that? Because my lawyers said jurors don't like it if you speak ill of the dead. Um, I didn't know how to conduct my own defence. So do you think the system let you down? I do think the system let me down. There needs to be more done with the police. They need to be aware and look out for coercive control. It's easy to talk to somebody and if you talk to them for any length of time, they will highlight certain things that have happened to them and they need to take note, and lawyers, and judges, and the CPS, um, and juries need to be educated because they have the final say. If, if a woman now is watching this, and what you're saying about your control, the way you were controlled strikes a chord with what they're going through, what, is, what would you say to them right now? Tell somebody, speak to somebody, speak to a friend that you can trust or a family member that you can trust and they will help you to leave. But you need to get out before it gets worse because it will destroy you and it will destroy your children who have to watch that type of behaviour as they're growing up. What would you say now, if you could go back in time to the 15-year-old Sally, what would you say? Walk away, don't get involved with him. All the pointers were there, but he wasn't going to change. Um, and he never thought there was anything wrong with him. And I think it's some form of a mindset, whether it's a learnt behaviour from parents or society, I don't know. This new law um, of coercive control was introduced during Theresa May's time as Home, Se Home Secretary. Yes. Um, yet she's knighted uh, the cricketer, Geoffrey Boycott, who was convicted of assaulting his ex-girlfriend. Has that tarnished her record in this area of domestic abuse? I think it definitely has. I think it's a step backwards um, when we should be looking forward. Um, it shows that somebody who did what he did um, and has no regret about it is appalling. Um, and to honour somebody who has those views is bad for society today. You think it should be withdrawn? I right. think it should be withdrawn. Clearly, Geoffrey Boycott denies that he assaulted his ex-girlfriend, though he was convicted. There's been £7 million worth of cuts to um, refuge services since 2010. What does that say about how society and how this government, the Conservative government, um, views women's protection? I don't think they care. I think they feel that perhaps somebody else should deal with it. But there isn't anyone else to deal with it. And these places are important. You have women who are subjected to battering by their partners or husbands, and if they don't get out, they may die. And they have nowhere to go. And what are they supposed to do? Sally Challen, thank you very much. Thank you.